Good morning, Shabbat Shalom from Israel. Um, I had made a commitment to produce a video that shows the land coming into the green and fading out of the green and set it within the time frame of not only the biblical calendar but the Gregorian calendar. And I apologize, I'm coming to you just a little bit late, but um, we did have a death in our small community here. And uh, I've spent about a week focused in that area. Three, the last three days we were packing the contents of Ahava's uh, apartment. So I'm running a little bit late on my commitment, but today we're going to take a look at that very subject. And you can probably hear my sidekick over here, Tuki. Tuki is a quick Quaker and he's been brought in the house out of the bird room because if you know anything about Quakers, they're a big pest. Yes, you are, Tookie. And he's going to talk back to me, I'm sure. They're a big pest, and he has just infuriated the African Greys until one decided that she was going to take care of the problem permanently. So Tuki has been moved into the house for his own safety, and you're just going to hear him over there making his little noises in response to my voice. In the coming year, I plan on... Abba willing, to make a full 12-month pictorial from the same location on the earth of how the land comes into green and how it fades. And again, it'll be set within not only the Gregorian calendar, but the biblical calendar will be annotated within that so that you can see that this very brief window is... Uh, so small, not only of the biblical calendar, but what, what our father is saying to us in the scripture when he talks about anything that's that's green. Uh, you know, I caused you to multiply as the bud of the field. Well, he's speaking specifically about this season. So it's a very tight window and it'll add so much understanding to your scripture reading. Okay, without further ado and without further input from Tuki, let's take a look at the videos that I made just yesterday of what the current condition of the earth is. And then I will introduce first some photos from the previous year and give you not only the Gregorian date, but the biblical calendar date for these photos as well. Okay, we're going to look at that same clip again. I want to point out a few things. I want to point out that the only green that you see is orchards or groves, depending on what they are. You're going to see uh, mango, olives, palm trees, almond trees. Mm, I think on that side of... Uh, 
our area, that's the, the majority of what is down there. And every bit of those are irrigated. In between those green square spaces is what is naturally occurring on the earth. And it's a really, really good case in point and an object lesson of why that when I'm looking at the calendar or trying to determine the calendar in any one year, I am not looking to any of the seven species, which are the seven first fruits offerings, to determine the calendar if they are irrigated and manipulated on a commercial level. So I would not look at the grapes under canopies that are not only, you know, controlled in their environment, but they're controlled in their nutrients and their watering. I don't look at those. Uh, the same with uh, the palm trees. I try to look at the ones that are outside of the orchards that are being irrigated and, and cared for. So let's look at the video again, and I'm going to try to bring in some of the sceneries more close up so that you can see what's on the earth at this point is only what man is caring for and the things that Elohim is caring for from the heaven, they have gone dormant. They are resting in the earth waiting for the next wet season to be born a second time. Boy, there's such a loaded statement when you consider what was just said spiritually, but we won't go into that. Uh, let's look at the video again. Okay, what you're looking at is the view to the south. This is called the Yavniel Valley. And to the south and the west is where I usually spot the new moon from this region. But if you look at the whole ridge, you will see that it's completely brown, except for there are some square areas of trees that show that there are orchards and things planted. But all of the normal crops that you would expect to see in the supermarket have uh, been already harvested and finished for the year on the land. So we're going to look at that same clip again, but I'm going to overlay some photos or maybe side by side. We'll see how it comes out, but there'll be a comparison of what happens in the green season as compared to what happens in the dead season. Again, please understand that what the world thinks of as our winter is actually our green season. I want you to please stop and try to wrap your mind around it. What you may think of of winter, if you're from a four season region, you get a picture of cold and snow and barrenness and a lack of foliage. What the world calls winter for us is exactly the opposite. It's our green season because it is wet. Not only is it wet, it's cold. That's a good thing because we live in a desert. At 107 degrees when it's dry, few things are going to survive. So when you look at this, consider that the world is telling you that this is winter in Israel. And I'm telling you, I've done videos on this, that the word winter or horif has to do with the seventh month when we strip the land and we plant the grains in preparation for the rains that are going to come. So, yes, modern Israel will call our rainy season winter based solely on the fact that it's the coldest months of our year. But it is not winter from the sense of barrenness. It is every sense of the word, the time of the abib when things are bursting forth with life from the earth. These photos were taken December 15th, no, excuse me, December 17th. On December 15th, the 11th new moon was sighted. So these photos actually come after quite a bit of rain. 
We'll look a little later at the exact timing when the green started to emerge from the earth. But you can see in these photos that December, what is known as our winter, is actually when everything is green and vivacious on the land of Israel. Our first slide is from November 7th, 2020, and the grains were just barely emerging. You couldn't even call the earth green. And our last slide is going to be from about May the 8th. It's only about the 10th biblical month that you can really start to see the blush of green on the earth. And by about the, let's see, the beginning of April, you could already see that the green was fading away on the earth. So we really only have about four, four and a half months when you can look out across the land and see the beautiful green colors that you're looking at here. I hope that was helpful. When you read about in the Bible, barley and wheat and buds and flowers and those types of things, you'll understand now it's a very short window. Or when people speak of winter in Israel, maybe you won't get a picture of barrenness anymore. Maybe you'll get a picture of our vibrant, beautiful green land when the best weather is here, when it's cool and rainy and Elohim is bringing forth every seed after its own kind. And when you hear about the word summer, you'll understand that it's really more like your winter if you're in a four season area because it's our time of barrenness. It is hot and it is dusty and it is dry. I'd like to thank you for watching and if you have any questions about this video, please go ahead and ask them and I will try to answer. No guarantee I know all the answers, but I'll be happy to share what I do know. Shabbat Shalom.